I'm going to make a brief opening statement about a current thing going on in the United States here, and that is the shooting down in Atlanta, where eight people were killed uh, and uh, seven women, six of Asian American background. And I was just on the telephone briefed by the Attorney General of the United States and the Director of the FBI. And the investigation is ongoing, and the question of motivation is still to be determined. But whatever the motivation here, I know that Asian Americans are in very, uh, very concern because, as you know, I've been speaking about the brutality against Asian Americans uh, for the last couple months, and I think it's, uh, it is very, very troublesome. And, uh, but I'm making no connection at this moment to the motivation of, what the, of the killer. I'm waiting for an answer from, as the investigation proceeds, from the FBI and from the Justice Department. So, uh, and uh, that's, uh, so I'll have more to say when the investigation is completed. Now, I want to say happy St. Patrick's Day to the Taoiseach. Uh, <laughs> it's good to, good to have you on television. But next year in Washington, next year in Washington, for years, as you know, Tishuk, we, uh, we celebrated this, uh, this St. Patrick's Day. I always put on a breakfast at my home and uh, as the Vice President's residence with leading Irish Americans, your ambassador, our ambassador, um, as well as uh, some of the prelates who were involved with us. And uh, it was always a good time. Then we'd go into this very office You'd sit in the chair over here, the T-shirt would sit there, and I'd sit where, uh, where the, uh, my national security advisor is sitting, and we'd have a long discussion with the president, and then we'd go up to the, uh, up to the United States Capitol, where the Speaker of the House, starting with Tip O'Neill, would put on an event as well. And, uh, and then I always snuck over to the Irish Embassy later. I hope we can do that next year. I hope we can do that next year. And in the meantime, uh, I want to thank you for the Shamrock Bowl. I don't know if you can see it here, but it's a great tradition, a custom that goes all the way back to Harry Truman, uh, who I have a bust of Harry Truman over in that corner. I notice he didn't move to grab any of the, uh, any, any of the Shamrocks. But, and tonight, Tishuk, I wish you, you hope you'll be able to see it at least remotely. We're going to light up the, uh, uh, the White House in green. Um, and uh, we, uh, there's, to celebrate the deep, deep affection that the, we Americans have, particularly Irish Americans have for Ireland and the people of Ireland. And it includes millions of Americans like my, like my great, great grandfather and my great grandfather and my grandfather, all of whom uh, were Irish Americans on both sides of the family. My, uh, my grandfather, Ambrose Finnegan, who was uh, a great football player, American football, and a newspaper man back at the turn of the, 19th, of the 20th century, uh, used to always say when later, when he was much older and I'd walk out of his home, he'd say, Joey, remember, the best drop of blood in you is Irish. <laughs> I remembered it, I promise you. And uh, because if I didn't, my grandmother, Geraldine, blew it. Finnegan would take me down. Um, and, uh, and we have a lot of great memories as well in our family because one of your predecessors, I went over. I've been to Ireland many times, but the first time I went to actually go back and look at my roots and meet my family was, uh, was back uh, when the last year we were, I was Vice President of the United States. And uh, we went both to uh, to Mayo, where the Bluets are from, and Ballina, the, the city. And uh, we went to uh, um, County Louth, where the Finnegans are from. And it was a great, great opportunity for me to show my grandchildren and children and my brother and sister. Um, I joked at the time, but I, after I left, I wondered why the hell we left in the first place. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And. Uh, uh, so I think, you know, there's a lot of folks uh, here in Ireland, my, my, my friends from Ireland would always say, the American Irish think they're more Irish than the Irish. Um, but uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, uh, we have a great affection for the country and a great affection for the tradition. 
And uh, we have a — Ireland and the United States have a robust agenda that we got to deal with on the substantive side of this issue — of these issues, uh, Taoiseach, and uh, from combating COVID to strengthening global health security to uh, also discussing our economic cooperation and Ireland's leadership now in the U.N. Security Council, which we're working together. Our U.N. ambassador is uh, — is online with us here. And uh, I just welcome the leadership and your partnership. And uh, you know my view and the view of my predecessor, my — of the Obama-Biden administration on the Good Friday agreements. We uh, — we strongly support them, think it's critically important to be maintained. And the political and economic stability of Northern Ireland is very much in the interest of — of all our peoples, the people-to-people -people ties. And uh, I think uh, the idea that we — we talked about, about uh, renewing our partnership in the All-Ireland Consortium uh, — Cancer Consortium, uh, the U.S., Ireland, and Northern Ireland. It's a partnership that uh, — that I think we can learn a lot from one another. It's one of the things that, as President Taoiseach, I am going to focus heavily on with our National Institute of Health on dealing with uh, — with cancer. We've all been victims of it in terms of our families. We all know what it's like, and we're going to make major investments in NIH and cancer research and development, and I'm looking forward to working together. As a matter of fact, my relatives in uh, uh, in Mayo uh, just dedicated a uh, — my uh, — Loretta, one of my cousins, uh, headed up the uh, — the hospice effort for cancer — not just cancer, but hospice in uh, — in Ireland. And they just dedicated a new significant facility to uh, my son, Bo Biden, who uh, — who died of, uh, of — of cancer. And so everything between Ireland and uh, the United States runs deep. Uh, Taoiseach, our — our joys, our sorrows, our passion, our drive, and our unrelenting optimism and hope. One of the few uh, quotes that uh, I've been given credit for in my career was — I said, but I mean it. <laughs> Maybe it's just my family. I said, we Irish are the only people who are nostalgic for the future. <laughs> And I think we are. Uh, it's a it's, it's a great op a great opportunity for you and I to get to talk a little bit. So, looking forward to our conversation, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting deeper into discussion about some of the things that are of great mutual interest to both of us. But as we used to say in the United States, Senator Tishik, I yield the floor to you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. President. And could I first of all, again on behalf of the Irish people, to you express my condolences uh, to the people of America um, and indeed uh, to the people of Atlanta and the families of those who were killed and injured uh, in the horror, horrible, and very shocking uh, shootings um, yesterday. And our solidarity is with you, uh, particularly with the, um, the Asian American community uh, who stand together against um, such mindless acts of violence. Uh, and I know, Mr. President, uh, that St. Patrick's Day is very special to you um, as a proud son of Ireland. Uh, equally, I have to tell you, the people of Ireland are so proud of your election as President of the United States of America. And I can think of no better day for me uh, to have the great pleasure to extend to you their warmest greetings. Thank you. Anachti nefele podrig port. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Now, as you said, it feels strange to have to celebrate a part. Um, as you know well, Irish people love to come together to celebrate our heritage and culture uh, with song, uh, with dance, uh, with parades, with poetry, uh, and with pride. And this year, because of the pandemic, it just simply isn't possible. And here in Ireland, people are, make, are marking the occasion in their homes, but they will be thinking especially of their loved ones around the world and sending them best thoughts and wishes. And they will do so uh, in the hope that next year will be better, as I and you believe it will. It will. With each person vaccinated, <coughs> we move closer to the day when people can meet each other, hug each other, uh, and celebrate again. Uh, and I greatly look forward uh, to you being able to visit Ireland 
as you have done so many times and as you've said so memorably um, before, uh, I also hope it would not be long before I can visit the United States again. Uh, for now, the Bowl of Shamrock in front of you is a symbol of the undying friendship between our two countries. A symbol of the good times we have shared and the challenges we have endured, always uh, at each other, other's side. The green shoots point to the brighter future that I know lies ahead. And building that better future will of course be part of, of what we discuss today. The policies of our, of our two governments are very closely aligned on the big challenges the world faces. And I look forward to exploring how we can defeat the COVID-19 virus, working together urgently to increase the supply of vaccine for our own people and for people around the world. Uh, we should share notes on our plans for recovery, gaining back the ground lost to the pandemic. Both the United States and Europe have put funds of unprecedented scale in place to support this vital work, to build a sustainable and inclusive future, supporting the digital and green agendas, promoting open and fair rules-based trade, delivering greater equality and opportunity. Mr. President, the world has rightly taken great heart from the steps you have already taken to bring the US back to center stage on global health, on climate, and on human rights. We want to work with you to promote our shared values and interests in the world, including at the United Nations Security Council, on which we are, as you said, currently serving. We want to work with you on climate action, uh, which becomes ever more urgent as we approach COP26 later um, this year. Today, I especially want to thank you for your unwavering support for the Good Friday Agreement. It has meant a lot, and it has mattered, including as we negotiated Brexit. With a new trading relationship now in place between the European Union and the United Kingdom, and a protocol that protects peace and avoids a hard border on this island, I want to move forward with a positive relationship with the United Kingdom. And that means standing by what has been agreed and working together to make a success of it. And that in turn then can help maintain peace and promote greater reconciliation on our shared island, goals that I know you support. There are so many areas where the Irish and American people are already working together, and we will celebrate some of them here today. The consortium through which our practitioners and researchers will prove their efforts uh, to defeat cancer that most pernicious disease, and I know it's very close to your heart in terms of dealing with that. The new initiative to share our poetry and bring it to newer and younger audiences uh, that we will announce today. Uh, Mr. President, like you, I am fundamentally an optimist. We have all endured the most difficult year, but alongside the suffering and the loss, we have seen immense compassion, care, and courage, and especially from our health workers, our educators and our volunteers. We have seen the world's best scientists come together to deliver treatments, vaccines and hope at extraordinary pace. And I say let the same spirit of cooperation now speed and guide our recovery uh, in the year ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. I look forward uh, to our discussion.